So some of you know we've teamed up with Picks, and that is PicksShop.com. There's an app, and we are working on the app with them. The coolest thing about it is we get to have meetings and go through design stuff and see how we can fix the UI UX. But there is so much technology behind this app, and like I can't even get it to you in a minute of everything that's going on. But if you do tastings, you could do tastings, you could do posts, and just say like, "Hey, I'm drinking this tonight." But if you do tastings, the app is going to start matching you to bourbons that you are going to like. You're going to find emails that come through that say, hey, you liked this one a lot. You might like these two. As you're searching through, you're going to see the percentage of like how well you match to the other people that are tasting and the other drinks that they are tasting as well. So this thing is so cool. It gives you recommendations. You could see how your friends rated things. It's just a fun way to interact and drink whiskey together, even though we are all virtual sometimes. You know, you could do it with the people in your neighborhood. You could do it with people across the country. Picks is so much fun. And go to PicksShop.com. Download the app. It's only for Apple right now, but we are going to get it for Android eventually. Go to PicksShop.com. Download the app today. Have fun plans for the outdoors? Make the memories last with the best outdoor coolers and drinkware. Celebrating 10 years of cool, Orca was founded in 2012, born from the idea of making a hard-sided cooler that beat out all the rest. Orca coolers are built to be as strong as the adventures you take them on. That's why they have a lifetime warranty while giving you world-class maximum temperature retention. Orca's drinkware offers the same high quality, keeping your drinks icy cold or hot for hours, and they look great while doing it. Their stainless steel vacuum-sealed tumblers and martini cup are perfect companions for your next outdoor adventure. Go to orcacoolers.com backslash bourbon for 15% off your order. That's orcacoolers.com backslash bourbon for 15% off. Orca, make it last. Zeke, I didn't think you were going to actually record tonight. Like you said, I'm going to give you an update later, and then you didn't give me an update, and I didn't know if we were going to record. I had poured a glass of red wine. I'd opened up a bottle of Orange Swift eight years in the desert. I was going to enjoy. My wife is having a, a Nashville vacation with her girlfriends, and I was going to like have a very mature night drinking red wine after the kid went to bed, and you ruined it. Like You ruined my dad night. Like You ruined my, my sanity. What do you have to say for yourself? I only caught portions of that because you broke up a lot, but I do wonder eight years in the desert, the wine was really aged there that long? Or is that like a <laughs> metaphor, or where are you going with that? No, that's the name of the wine. So that's the expression. They have like machete, eight years in the desert, abstract. There's different Orange Swift wines. So what persuaded you to buy something as a consumer that said eight years in the desert? Because if I'm buying a wine and I don't even drink wine, eight years in the desert don't sound too damn good to me, son. It's just the expression. It's Dave Finney. Like he also made The Prisoner. He made, it's the same reason why savage and cook which is the distillery that dave finney owns the rye is called lip service and the bourbon is called burning chair to me the first thing i think of is to be like the first 30 to 45 days after having a kid Hello, hello, everyone. My name is John Edwards. With me, as always, is Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad Shrinking Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us part of your day. Zeke, I think we need to check your math. 30 to 45 days is not eight years in the desert, but... I mean, it feels like it, my God. Woo! <laughs> I appreciate you actually making an appearance on our podcast. It's good to see you. How you been? I mean, I'm still alive and kicking. I don't know why you make these references. There's just times I'm busy. I know. I, I can't help it. I, I mean, I, I have things to tend to and deal with, and I, I try to juggle as much as I can. And we appreciate you. We do, my friend. What's new? What's going on with you? Have you been? Anything to update the people on? Um, I don't think so. Who travels as of yet? Thanksgiving, I'll be out in Breckenridge skiing for a few days. I'm going to try to catch up with some folks. 
couple folks from you know the Willet crew I keep up with from time to time. Hopefully see Nate from 5280 and Hidden now, Barn Whiskey now. As a more relevant Hidden Barn. I've slowly pitched that obviously you and I have been big fans of him as much as him as us for way too many years. And anything we can do to support, we're more than happy to. But I've definitely said like, I can't ski too good, but come down the mountain with me. I'm more than happy. 100%. I love what he's doing, what Jackie's doing. And the other guy, I don't know the other guy. I feel bad, but it is Nate and Jackie and another guy from 5280. And then uh, Royce Neely from Neely Family Distillery. I think yeah. there's... Well, and two, I mean, not to cut you off, sorry, but half the time we do forget what we want to say because we're both kind of ramble. Matt but, Danker. Um, I just... Matt Danker is the other guy. Sorry. <laughs> Hey, go with it. My thought was to conclude it was, you know, our friend Melissa from Bullet. She's got promoted to pretty much the Jackie role at Brown Foreman. And I, I couldn't think of a better person. I don't know many people in the industry that have been as nice, kind, and and facilitated, you know, pick experiences and, you know, bullshitted with us like that. So I, I'm happy all around for everyone. A lot of good stuff happening to people. We're all about the positivity. Zeke, tonight we are drinking Wolves. It's their unique signature whiskey blend. It's the first time it's going into markets, actually. But Wolves is releasing a variation of its unique signature blend into select markets for the first time, giving a broader audience the chance to acquire it. Previous releases were only available on the website and sold out in minutes. This signature blend flavor profile is unlike any Anything else on the market the majority of the blend consists of uniquely the majority of the blend consists uniquely of whiskey distilled from craft beer with the balance of the blend compromised of rye whiskey sourced in indiana and aged in northern california the beer whiskeys in this run are number one whiskey distilled from craft stout beer aged in used french oak for nine years Two, whiskey distilled from a craft California pale ale aged in used French oak for seven years. The two rye whiskeys were aged for seven and six years in new American oak. Wolves master distiller Marco Karakasevic distills these rare California beer whiskeys over a 10-day period, sleeping in four-hour shifts so that he alone can make each cut, selecting the heart of hearts for double distillation. He does so in a small, slow, alembic brandy still that was imported to California from Cognac, France in 1983. Coming off the brandy still, these beer distillates have massive body, viscosity, and take oak exceptionally well. No flavoring has been added to the whiskey. However, the TTB requires the hop flavor designation because the whiskey was distilled from a refined starting product, bottle-ready beer, rather than a grain mash. This release of Wolves is limited to 1,979 six-pack cases and will be available in select retail in October. Not available in all 50 states. Sign up for allocation at wolveswhiskeyca.com for updates and a chance to purchase directly online. I think it's interesting only 1979 six-pack cases were available. Admittedly, Zeke had some connection issues. You're not going to hear like a 10 minute pause, but I've been sitting here for 10 minutes waiting for him to come back on. I think the last line, I should have written it down. I mean, this is me being an amateur tonight, but I think I had just finished the press release. So like I was going to ask, what did you think about this whiskey, Zeke Baker? And I think that's where we were. But you listener, I'm sorry if it doesn't come across that smooth. I'm hoping it comes across that smooth, but we'll see. What do you think about this whiskey, Zeke Baker? I think that's fair enough. In a nutshell, I mean, I think the release does mimic the, the profile pretty well, maybe almost in the inverse, because I think they talked about the beer first and then the, the rye whiskey. To me, I, I get a very strong rye right on the front end, and then from the mid to the back, I get a very fizzy beer. And I know that's kind of ambiguous, but... I'm not the biggest beer fan in the world. A lot of the craft stuff, a lot of things that I guess deviates from the middle of the road, I guess you would say, like middle light or Coors Light or something. I'm not too big on. But to me, this is literally just good, clean rye whiskey mixed in with a very good, heavy carbonated or fizzy beer that just has a normal profile to it. And I like the synergy between the two. Funny enough for me, I know you you haven't been nosing a whole hell of a lot lately. I definitely get like IPA mixed with stout on the nose. Both are there, you know, like, I mean, they, they talk about how this one and it wasn't an IPA, but it was a 
pale ale that was mixed with the stout but it's like i get like that and you're not a big beer guy so it's really hard to like talk about this with you but like ipas can have a very distinct nose i know pale ales can as well so you know it's just you could tell that there's two different beers in here funny for me on the taste i get like a a fizzy beer that you say but i almost get like a tad bit of like weed not that i know what that smells like or tastes like or anything but like i feel like there's a little bit of you know sticky icky icky in here <laughs> i don't mind saying i i know what that taste smell and whatever likes it was never my jam but i mean you know buy the ticket take the ride right but admittedly and for anyone that hasn't read up too much on wolves or or where i think they source and a fair amount of their their product comes from it's linked into charbet charbet from what at least i know and correct me if i'm wrong or somebody else can has always been linked on doing distill it from beers that's kind of their niche and and you know what they they put their staple on and some beers and hops you know, you end up with a little bit of funk and weed. I mean, it just kind of is what it is. But at the same time, the people that love it, they love it for those reasons. And where I would give them the most credit and I guess kudos would be they keep distilling from different beers, finishing in different casks. So it's kind of like, you know, to what degree do you like or appreciate something? And, and I think that's where there's, you know, a lot of, I didn't love like this batch or that or or whatever they put out but with variety i mean it's like baskin robbins they got 31 flavors for a reason yeah i mean i think it's a good whiskey i think people are going to enjoy it i think it is a boutique brand that you're buying the brand as much as you're buying the whiskey i'm just going to be honest you know it's like it's a cool looking packaging it's very minimalistic packaging most people wanted it because it was so hard to get it and now this one's a little bit more available you know i think people are definitely going to want to get in on it i see your side of it and i guess too like they had like a you know a release kind of thing here at jeff ruby's in nashville we were invited you, you know, were invited i was not you did not invite me you told me the day of like oh by the way you could come and i'm like well i can't go now that you gotta tell me more notice i told you the same time that i was told i'm being polite here <laughs> Either way, what I was going to say was simply another point that a fair amount of people would miss is simply, yes, they've had some big boutique releases, but there's a lot of moving parts here. Almost go back and reanalyze what you read off from the press release between the whiskey, the finishes, the different distillates from beer and the finishes. That's a lot going on. And I, I think to me and, and where I really resonated the most was blending tons of people are making and sourcing whiskey it is what it is as we look further down the road who and how can blend and, and find unique flavors is going to be where the proof is in the pudding so to speak and I, I think that's where they they've found more of a uniqueness in having like the past three or four batches they've put out there's no repeaters like if you're jim beam white label you want repeaters because that's your staple right no i'm with you 100 percent. i mean i think not to to cut you off on this but i think that's the cool thing about what they're doing is they're doing unique shit like this is going to be their kind of staple like this one with the beers and the different finishes and the french oak and the you know the american oak and, and throwing the rye in with i think the rye has a nice spice that kind of lends itself to those beer forward spirits a little bit it, it just goes well together on this I, I will say that i think there is a awesome just synergy not to steal your word with everything here i do like <laughs> that they do different things i think they're a brand that you got to watch out for because they're going to be doing cool stuff in the future but i think they are a brand that people like want to get in on too there is a coolness factor that we need to talk about here well yeah when you do a collab or collabs with, with will it, it and you're doing you know like I there's mean, there's a coolness the factor right um but so i get that and, and i'm not gonna escape that at all but i will say like you know sitting there and, and talking with jeremy one of the guy the guy running the brand you know this meal thing in nashville and we're talking about like blends and this and that and he's like literally I thought I had it dialed in. I woke up at three in the morning and I knew what I missed and I knew where I missed it. And I had all these like samples, all this media stuff done. And we dumped it all out <laughs> and redid it because I missed and I didn't miss by much, but I knew what I missed. And like, I, you know, like, 
you know, you love that. Like, because further in the conversation, we're like, well, how do you know when you stop? How do you know when it's as good as it's going to get? Like, because one day we all have to be like, all right, you know what? I'm going to call it a day on this right here. Tomorrow's another day and it might be better. But either way, for this project and this thing, I'm done. Like, to me, it was just super fun to to have a conversation at a level of like, all right, you know, this is your namesake. This is what you, you know, you're, you're betting the house on. How far do you push it? How do you know when it's good? Like, you know, I mean intangibles that you and I don't have to deal with. Thank the good Lord. Cause we'd probably both be broke. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We would better. We just, you know, argue indefinitely like, no, damn it. I want it spicy. No, John, it doesn't need to be. I don't think we'd ever, <laughs> you know, the one thing that we always kind of are really good on is we always agree on the juice at the end of the day. Like we disagree <laughs> on so many other things, but like when it comes down to like picking a barrel or doing a blend, we're always pretty solid. I agree some days, you know, sometimes we have to almost like Rochambeau to see who wins. Maybe. But anyways, <laughs> so at the end of the day, Zeke, I think if you find this, you are not going to be disappointed. It's unique. It's something different. It's something fun and just like cool. I mean, I don't know other way to say it. Inspiring profiles and pushing the boundaries is where I like to classify this. Because honestly, I, I've had some other batches and releases that I didn't love. But this one, I, you know, I'm not a beer guy. But I get behind this pretty solid. I, I think it resonates well, and the contrast of flavors is really interesting. That's where I appreciate the innovation and pushing the boundaries, I guess I would say. Agreed. Go ahead and find us on Facebook at Dad Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Instagram at Dad Drinking Bourbon. Please leave us an open, honest review, just like we leave open, honest reviews about the whiskey we drink. I hope this show turns out okay. It's been a little bit of a cluster with connection issues and interruptions and all sorts of stuff, and hopefully I can work my magic and turn it into an amazing show. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? Good old Nashville, Tennessee. Cheers. Ciao. 